Guys, in this video, we'll see how to use state in Jetpack Compose. In terms of Android Studio, we require the Android Studio Canary. On clicking the link, we go to this page and here we need to download Canary Build. After downloading the Android Studio, let's click on New Project. And here we see now an empty Compose activity. So we need to click on this and click on next. And finally, we decide our name, package name, and finally click on the button finish. Let's look through the package and what the folder structure looks like. So we click on this project. We see the manifest file, which is as it is. Inside the Java folder, we see a UI.theme. So basically, these are the files which would be comprising your theme and colors and shapes and the main entrance point, which is the main activity. Inside the REST folder, we have a normal drawables and MIP maps and values. And notice that there is no layout file, layout.xml, since this is using Jetpack Compose. This is our main activity. Notice that here the main activity extends the component activity instead of the app compact activity. Uh, the next thing we see there is the set content which has a hands-on Kotlin theme. This is basically a variable which was assigned in our theme.kt if we look out here. So it's from here. Let's see our composable function now. So we expand this and let's split our design. So now here we see on the right hand side, this is the description or the visual representation of this composable function. So this comprises of a row and this row has a checkbox and there is a space between the checkbox and the text. The way we are able to visualize this composable function is because of this preview property. So if we, let's say, remove this property, we won't be able to see our composable function. And if we include it back, so we will be able to see our composable function. And also, this, is, this white is because of the show background as true. Otherwise, it would show the text is black, but the background won't be white. So if we do like this, so it would be shown as black here. Let's look at the first approach of saving the state. So here we initialize a checkbox state variable and here we use the mutable state of and assigning a default value as false. Inside our checkbox, we use this checkbox state variable, initialize its value to the checked and on check change, we assign the value if it's changed to the current value. And let's now run this function. So here we see our checkbox. If we click on it, it marks as true. Similarly, if I unclick, it marks it false. Uh, the inside our composable function, we now have our logic inside it, which makes it hard to reuse. And also, remember, doesn't take care into the configuration changes. So let's say our mobile device was shifted from portrait to landscape. It won't remember the state. So let's see how we can solve in the next approach. Let's look at the second approach. So here we use remember savable and rest of the things of the checkbox remains the same. So remember savable basically saves the configuration changes of the state. So now let's run this application. So we see our checkbox there as it is. And now let's see if I click this and make the configuration change, the checkbox still appears like this. And similarly, if I change it back to the original, it stays the same. For decoupling the logic outside this composable, let's see how we can do in the third approach. In approach three, we lift up the state, which is also called as state hoisting. So what we do is we create 
a composable, another composable custom card state. We take all our logic inside that state and we do the same thing as remember saveable and assign the value to checkbox state. In our create custom card, we introduce two additional parameters, checkbox state and on checkbox pressed. And these two values are passed from the parent composable custom card state. Inside it, we pass the custom checkbox state dot value, which is the current value derived from this variable. And also whatever, what happens once the user taps on the checkbox. Inside our create custom card, we take use of these two parameters and assign it to checkbox checked and on check change as on checkbox pressed. Now let's see if we run this application. So this is the same result as we have achieved from the past two approaches. We click on the check peers and disabling or unchecking it disappears. Fourth approach which we will see is the view model approach. Here we take in a variable as a live data of type boolean and we also create a function on checkbox change which takes in a state and as per that state we assign that state to the live data value. Inside our custom card state we take in the parameter of this checked view model which we defined here and here we extract the value of is done which is a live data and we observe its state so and finally the value is passed down to the child composable create custom card which is untouched and is from the previous approach approach 3 pass down the on checkbox change which comes from the item view model inside our on create we create this variable of type late in it and inside we initialize it to check view model and for rendering the ui we use the custom card state and pass in our variable item view model now let's run the application so ui remains the same just when we click on the tick we see the toast i am selected which only appears when the checkbox is selected we were able to achieve the toast because as we are using view model and now we observe the is done which is a live data and whenever the status is true we show the toast that's it from this video guys source code and article links are mentioned in the description below and thanks guys for watching